few verses. We'll pray together and be seated. Uh, again, thank you for singing. Thanks for the songs this morning. And uh, appreciate all the, uh, collectively, the praise that we can give to the Lord. Not a whole lot of things that we can give to God that He don't already have. Amen? Amen. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill, and, and I, I think He owns the whole world in His hand. Um, but our praise is something that we can withhold or we can give. And our offerings, He sure don't need them, but I think that He uh, desires our heart. And uh, uh, just neat things that, uh, what, what can you give someone who has everything, right? My dad's got a birthday tomorrow, and, I'm, and my, my sister said, hey, what should we get dad? I'm like, are you kidding me? You're asking me what, we, what can you get dad? But <coughs> oh, the Lord, uh, he is uh, uh, pleased with our praise. Mark chapter 6, verse number 45, and we'll read uh, down through the end of the chapter. The Bible says, and straightway, he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent the, away the people. When he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed, would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship straightway, they knew of him. And ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Let's be seated and we'll pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for the morning. <clears throat> thank you for the meaning of people coming into the house of the Lord to worship and to present our bodies and our offerings and ourselves on this great day that you've made and that we remember the Lord Jesus rising from the dead early in the morning, the first day of the week. Lord, I pray that you give me wisdom to preach. Lord, um, just a reminder that we all need uh, another touch from you until we get to have the fullness of our faith and uh, be like you when we see you. And so, God, uh, I praise you for your mercy. I thank you for your discipline and your goodness and your grace and also... Lord, or when you have to get our attention, just thank you for that. Praise you for the results of the week and the, um, the uh, fruit and just the, um, the victories. Lord, I pray that, that now we look for today and tomorrow and not just live in the past, but press on to the high mark of the calling. Uh, we ask that you be with every person that comes in, every servant and sacrifice that's given. Lord, it would be uh, received by you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and so, um, this passage, I, I remember being um, at a preacher's meeting in Mount Orb, I believe it was 1995 or 96, and uh, it was the first time I heard Brother Dave McCracken preach. That was a sight, and that was an event. And, but the same day, I heard a man from West Virginia, I can still remember uh, the message that he preached, some of it, and uh, not all of it, but just some of it. And I remember uh, thinking, wow, I've never heard that before. And he preached on this passage uh, that the Lord would have uh, walked on by. As uh, you see that in verse number, um, verse number 48, walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. And it just caught my attention uh, that we can catch the Lord's attention if we really seek after him. And so uh, this, this week... <clears throat> We're not going to uh, ignore today, but I'm praying for next Sunday. I'm praying for our revival services. I'm praying that God would um, uh, touch and soften our hearts. Uh, on our prayer group this week, uh, a man's prayed every day that, Lord, soften my heart. And I thought, wow, I, I've forgotten to pray that. And, and when you're involved and, and consciously trying to seek the Lord, sometimes I've, I've neglected to realize that my heart can get hardened just like everybody else's. This story here is not about atheists, it's not about agnostics, it's not about um, uh, unrepentant uh, uh, Pharisees that reject Christ. 
This story is about disciples who got in a ship to go on the other side, Jesus praying for them. And look, it says in verse number 52, for their heart was what? Their heart. Not not everybody else, not the, the, quote, wicked or the worldly or the wondering. These are the ones that were following him and their heart was hardened. And so, uh, let's just be honest, sometimes uh, when, when uh, a preacher preaches a message and you're like, boy, I'm glad so-and-so heard that, mm-hmm, yeah, you know, boy, I, I, I hope that guy in the third row finally, nobody's in the third row, hope that guy, in, okay, sorry, Jeremy, so the third, that guy in the third row gets that message, and, and uh, we, we see it or hear it for someone else, but uh, friend, my heart, your heart, uh, needs to be softened and needs to be uh, uh, capable of hearing and not letting it pass by. And so the passage itself, first of all, I just want you to see in verse number 45, he constrained his disciples. The word constrained means it's necessary, it's compelling, it is a, a, a must that, that they needed to get in the ship. And when we get to the, con- the, the, the conclusion of it, I think that uh, hopefully we'll realize why God has to get us to a place to soften our hearts. Uh, It's so important that as a Christian, now listen, if you're not saved, it's very important that your heart uh, gets softened so that it can uh, receive the word and be saved. But boy, it is just as important that us believers who have come to worship want to do something for God, willing to please Him, would continue to have a soft heart. Uh, I, I'm just as guilty, I'm sure, as anyone else, and sometimes thinking, mm-hmm, they get what they deserve. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what they get. They, they, that happened, but it's, it's because, and I think, what about me? What if I got what I deserve? Yeah. Yeah. What, what would happen if I didn't receive mercy from time to t- I don't even want to think about that. And um, um, So it, it, it's imperative that I'm reminded to soften my heart, and to not get hardened to what others are doing, what's going on in my own life, what the Lord is trying to say. And, and this, this passage here, he constrains them to get in. Do you think God knew that their heart was hard before they got in the boat? Yes. The Lord was not ignorant of anything in this passage. <clears throat> he knew they were going to get to the other side, too. Look at verse 45. He constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to do what? Go to the other side. That storm, although they were afraid and the winds had to be ceased, it was not uh, a matter of if they were going to drown or go under. No, he told them, get in the boat, you're going to the other side. Boy, I'm so glad that I'm going to go to the other side when my life's ended. Amen? I have no doubt or fear uh, that when I take my last breath, that I'm going to take my first breath in heaven. Uh, I want you to pray for our brother Rodney Phipps, and, and they've, they, uh, I don't know how much longer he has uh, to be on this earth, and, and he's fought a good fight. He uh, Faithful, early service. Uh, Rodney's always sitting in about the second, third, fourth row on this side in church, and him and Debbie, and, and Rod got baptized at the beginning of his sickness, and uh, uh, he, he told me yesterday, he said, I've got kids and grandkids, but I, I'm ready, preacher. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Wow. When you get to a point where you can see the end, are you ready? Do you know you're going to the other side? Notice in verse number 45, he said it's his disciples. The paths of a disciple are directed, even if the purpose is not detected. But once we go through what we're uh, called to do, I pray that the praise, if we get any, would be deflected and given back to him. We're his disciples. It's not our journey. It's not our path. It's his. The Bible says that he constrained his possession disciples. What a blessing that when you're saved, you're in the hand of God, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, and he has the right to put you in any ship, hardship, fellowship, uh, whatever ship. He gets to decide that if we're his disciple. Then it's his direction. Verse 45, it says to go to the other side. Boy, it removes a lot of anxiety and a lot of fears when I just trust that God's going to direct my life if I'll just let go of the wheel. A gentleman last night said, he said, I got a question. I pray for God's will to be done, and then I grab the wheel back. I'm like, let go of it. You got to trust that he's going to, he said, I know, and then something happens and I get all upset. And I said, well, that's just your human frailty. 
But I'll tell you this, um, and I, me and Will have been talking about this, I, I've probably physically done less for the Lord's service physically the last two years than I have any other two years in, in, in ministry of Mary Zo. And I've prayed more the last two years than I ever have in any two years of ministry. And more things positive have happened these last two years than any other two years in our ministry. Now you go figure that one out. It's when I let go of the path and hold on to the person, that's when things go the right way. Let go of, the, uh, of whatever and hold on to the person. It doesn't matter what you're going through if Jesus is getting you through it. Is a Red Sea going to uh, limit God? Is a, 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 a den of lions going to limit God? Is a fiery furnace? Uh, I mean, uh, driving to Cincinnati, is that going to limit God? Amen. He can protect you wherever you go. That was a bad joke, but I tried to throw in a different town instead of Cleveland. Okay, just trying to help you there. <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you go. If the path is directed by God, certainly and surely, we, it's His direction. And then look at verse 45. It's His design. His design. I do believe that now that I'm saved, that God's sovereign will and sovereign plan will take place in my life. And if I don't allow it on earth, he will make it happen in eternity. The Bible tells us that we're in his hand and he's predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. And so if I'm fighting that or resisting that, he still got me where he wants me because I'm his Verse number 45 talks about the constraining of His disciples. And that ship that they get into is His design. He surely could have walked them around. He could have walked them through, walked them over. But He allowed them to be in a place that they would experience the storm on that, on that body of water, that sea, so that the, something could be learned. I love that in verse 45 that God's confident. Verse 45, it says, go over to the other side. Uh, whatever the, the trial or whatever the, uh, uh, the team or, or the thing that we're on, uh, it's, it's not a question of whether they're going to get there. He's confident. Uh, I know that uh, we have questions about all kinds of things in life, but the promises of God should never be a question mark. It should always be a period. Amen. I'm kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day. I know, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. He will never leave me nor forsake me, that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I shall not fear what man should do unto me. Those promises are not question marks. They're periods. Amen. And the confidence in this passage, and, and friend, I, we're just as, I'm just as human and you are as anyone else in the middle of a storm inside of a ship. There can be some doubts and some worries whether or not we're going to get through. But the confidence of God's word should always ensure us that we will get through. Confident. And if there's anything more you need, look at verse 46. When he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain. What's it say? The, the Son of God, God in human flesh, knows all things. Ha, ha, part, the, the, uh, the word which was, uh, by which everything was made that was made, He prays. It, was there a, a lack in His life? No. But there sure was a lesson to give to everyone else as He walked on this earth. The, the Son of God, the, the coming King of creation one day, the, the Lord of Lords, went apart to pray. Boy, I love the thought that he went from the crowd. Mm -hmm. I used to hate to be alone. Now with four kids and a church, I can't wait to be alone. <laughs> it's like a blessing of all blessings. I'm like, no one's around? <laughs> yes! <laughs> As a kid, oh, and I, I, I notice uh, some of the kids would be like, oh, I want someone to come over. I need someone to play with. I'm like, you got this, that, that, that. But there's a longing not to be alone as kids grow up. They want to have a friend. They want to have a pal. You know, there is a time that it's good to be alone. Because with Jesus, you're never alone. You say, preacher, you don't know. And I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to uh, uh, lessen uh, the departure of, of loved ones and things like that. But I tell you this. If you can learn to be alone with God, you'll never be alone. You'll never be alone if you can learn to be alone with God. 
to be content in all states, whatsoever we're in. Oh, from the crowd, from the norm. And, and, and he just left, departed in the mountain, put those disciples on a ship. No, I got something else to do. You go here. And, and that, that concern that Jesus, even though physically apart, was not spiritually or emotionally apart from them. And I think that that's the, the promise and the, the, uh, 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 the consolation that we have now. Our Lord and Savior is at the right hand of the Father, but it's not like He is disjointed from us. The presence and the Spirit of Christ dwell in us, and where two or three are gathered His name, He is in the midst. And so <clears throat> you see this, that the concern of Him is He's praying for us. He's praying for those disciples while they're in the ship. And then... In verse number 47, as we've already read through the passage, but it says, And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. It doesn't matter how long you're living or what you're going, uh, where where you're at, what mountaintop or or peak that you're in. Night always comes upon us. The, The earth continues with day and night and day, in Genesis, day and night. And there, there's a cycle of that. Uh, and and uh, there, there's some blessings of, of the day that we can see and that we can arise and work. And there's some warnings of the night. Evil men, seducers, uh, love darkness rather than light because they're evil deeds thereof. <clears throat> but it, it's just a, a fact that the coming of even comes upon all of us. There's an even of our life where the day comes to an end and we get to... Uh, the allotment of our days, and we just have to accept the fact that we're not made to live on this earth forever after sin. An evening of uh, of, uh, uh, period um, at the fair this last week, the the, the 4-H or the FFA kids, that was their last year, they let them hand a a little paper and they could give uh, some remarks, and the auctioneer would read it off and say, this is so-and-so, their last time in the ring. They'd like to thank this person, that person, and one big old fella, I don't know where he's from, but I, I got to meet him the night before the cattle show, and he had a big old brown Swiss, and he was bigger than the brown Swiss. You know what I'm saying? Just a big old guy. Uh, he led that, that steer around. That was a big steer, and, and uh, boy, he, he, the steer won some things, and he got in the ring, and, and uh, they, they uh, gave his name, Eric Goddard, I believe is his name. I, I, it's how much of an impression it made. And he said, I want to thank the Lord Jesus. And I want to thank God. I'm so thankful for my experiences for 4-H, but I'm even more excited what God has for my life in the future. I'm like, I'll bid. I'll bid on the... I ain't got no money. I'll bid. But his time in the ring came to an end. I remember my last basketball game. Oh, we lost. I thought, this is it. No more games for me. Remember my last, you know, you can, you can think of whatever it is. All of it comes to an end. And here, the coming of even, the Bible uh, gives us this, this picture that night was coming. Oh, when night comes, your sight is limited. Their strength was lacking and their soul was longing. And sometimes we try to avoid the, the evens of life and the nights and the darkness of life. But there are lessons even to learn in the darkness. I remember when I finally learned that I, not to be afraid in the dark. It was 25 years ago. I was about 26 years old, I think. But I finally got to the point where, I, this is what I thought. What am I going to do if someone jumps out and grabs me anyway? I'm not like I can defend myself. If, if there's a wicked, evil spirit, he's going to get me, so why am I worried about it? I, I finally came to that realization. I remember, uh, oh, I hated to be alone in the dark, man. It, when We were hunting in the woods and, and waiting until sundown. I'd try to sneak out early so I'd be the first one back of the truck because I didn't want to be the last one back of the truck in the dark. I'm scared. I'm scared. I, I am. I'm scaredy cat. Don't, don't play no, no scary movie around me. I'm running the other room, buddy. I, <clears throat> and, but I finally realized, I, I, I don't, what am I going to do about it? You know, there's some lessons that you can learn in the nights of life. When it seems like there is no vision, when it seems like there's Strength is lacking. And it's in those moments that your life and your longings come to a crossroad and God is able to be everything you need. Look at this. 
It says in verse 47, that even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. Three circumstances that caused them to toil in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night, 3 a.m., they've been toiling for hours and not getting very far, and said, he cometh unto them. <clears throat> Why didn't he come in the first watch? Why didn't he come at the second watch? Maybe because it took three watches to soften their heart. Maybe it took three watches. Hey, friend, a soft heart eliminates a lot of hardship seas that you have to go in. If you've got a soft heart to the things of the Lord, he's not going to have to put you in as many ships like this. You say, preacher, I thought I had a soft heart. Why am I going through this? Now, I'm, I'm not the question what we go through. There's other purposes. But this ship, this storm, the Bible says, verse 52, for their heart was hardened. These are the disciples. <laughs> These are the, uh, the, the, the sacrificial servants of the Lord. They left their nets. They left their families. They left their fortune. And their hearts were hardened. I just want to remind us that a heart can get hard very quickly with lack of water, with overexposure to heat. It can get hard. It doesn't take long. And then it's got to be softened up, scrubbed on. I was, I was using the grill this week, and, and uh, Tom Jones uh, allowed us to use the, some of their stuff, and and uh, uh, we had one of those, those hard stones on the grill because I thought, I don't want to have to clean this grill after I'm done. I'm just going to clean up this hard stone. Well, I left it in there a little long. And the uh, marinade of the chicken, not to make you hungry, um, became more like a, uh, uh, a crisp crust on that thing. And then I had to scrub hard to get it off. I, had to <coughs> I worked hard this last week. Amen, right? And I thought, but if I'd have just cleaned that up when it was still soft, it would have been a lot easier scrubbing that thing off. And if I'd have got some steam on it when it was hot, it would have came off a lot easier than on me letting it dry and get cold and then trying to get it cleaned up. See, some of us wait so we're so cold and so hardened that, oh, I need to get my life right. Well, now it takes some scrubbing, son. Now it takes a little more effort, sis. If you stay close when it's, when it's uh, uh, moist and when it's uh, hot, it's a lot easier to keep that clean. Yeah. The evening had come and the night was there, took to the fourth watch before he came to them. Why did the Lord wait so long? That's a great question to ask, and maybe it's because it took that much to get a heart ready to receive him. Verse 48 tells us that, it wasn't just the, the, the storm, uh, it wasn't just where they were at without him, it was the storm. The Bible says that, that the, the wind was contrary unto them. And if you are a believer in this room and you have been saved by the grace of God, <clears throat> just let me remind you, this world is not our home. This world is not our friend. There may be some times when you think it's your friend, and when you get some blessing from it, but it is not your friend. It does not love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is, it is uh, resisting the day that He comes back to rule and reign over everything. He's going to, peace on earth, why, would, why wouldn't everyone want that? That's what everybody says, we want peace. No, not, not the Lord's peace. The wind was contrary, the world is contrary, the work is contrary, and the wicked is contrary. And they toiled until Jesus came in their ship. In love in verse number 48, as I, th I mentioned when we started, he was walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. Boy, I know that I've walked by some things and uh, missed them in my life and, and just passed up opportunities I wish I would have taken advantage of. <clears throat> but when it comes to the things of the Lord, if you're not careful, they'll pass right by you. And the opportunity uh, to see the Lord move and work, it's just there for a moment because he'll go find somebody to do what he wants to get done. 
And I'm not trying to scare you into serving God. I'm just trying to urge you that you don't want to miss the opportunity to serve the Lord. You don't want to miss the opportunity to have Him come into your hardship or whatever ship that you find yourself in. The Bible says, as walking upon the sea would have passed by them, and verse 49 says, But when they saw Him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. They cried out for the wrong reason, but the Lord still heard them cry. <clears throat> they thought it was somebody else, but the Lord still came into their ship. You don't have to be the greatest theologian for the Lord to spend time in your life. You just have to have a great longing for the Lord to spend time in your life, and He'll come and He'll be there. A guy asked last night, he said, Hey, if I start reading the Bible, is there a right and a wrong way to read the Bible? I said, Yeah, the wrong way is not to read the Bible. He said, Where should I read? I'm like, I told him some place. I said, just, just read. He said, Well, that's all I've been doing. I said, You're on the right path, friend. You just read that book. Spend time in that word. The wind was contrary, and they cried out. Can I remind you that God heard the cries of Sodom and Gomorrah and went and visited them? And they weren't the cries of the righteous. Only a few escaped there, but God heard the cries. God heard the cries in Egypt from the children of Israel. God heard the cry of blind Bartimaeus. God hears the, the cry of, of so many different ones. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 19, if we don't cry out, the rocks will cry out to praise Him. As uh, the Pharisees tried to quiet the crowd when Jesus came in on that donkey, and uh, they, they, they urged them to be quiet, and He said, if these don't, then the rocks will cry out. God will hear your cry. There's a wonderful song, I believe Mark Bishop sings that God wants to hear your voice. When the wisest man has spoken, he still wants to hear your voice and your cry. Well, my, vo my voice isn't very eloquent, Moses said. Well, I don't know if, if he cares. Yes, he wants to hear your cry and your voice. And don't underestimate the power of your voice. They cried out, and the Bible says he heard them. It says that he walking upon the sea would have passed by, and when they cried out, they were all troubled, and immediately, verse 50, immediately he talked with them. This is the amazing grace and the amazing mercy that God has. If I were the Lord Jesus, knowing that those guys had been doubting and worried and, and didn't even recognize me, and, and the contrary and all these things, and their hearts are hard, that's why they're in the ship, and then they, <clears throat> they cry out, I might say, let's just see how long they're going to cry. But the Bible says he immediately talked with them. The prodigal son came back, and the father didn't have to take a vote, didn't have to think it over, didn't have to uh, 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 count the, the inheritance that he'd given already. He went running to meet the son. What a blessing, believer, that when you want to talk to God, He immediately will talk to you. The Bible says, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. A young man last night, he said, man, I remember being at my, my grandpa's funeral, and my grandpa always preached, and I thought I probably should have been doing more and preaching myself, and, and I, just, I just went the other way, and he said, I'm going to do something for God. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do it now. And I thought, young fella, God heard your cry, and God will accept you right where you're at. If you'll follow him, he'll make a place for you to be close to him. Last night I gave this illustration, and, and it, it's, I was just driving there thinking what I was going to uh, frame some of the message around. And, and um, a lot of times when a preacher gets to preach at a new place, he uses old jokes. And he pulls out one of his good old sermons that worked really good before. I'm just giving you some preacher secrets. And uh, uh, I get to pick from a bunch of them. And now, there's not a whole lot of good ones, but I'll pick from a bunch of them to get one to preach. <laughs> and, and last night, I, 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 I thought, man, I, I, it's just another passage. And I did a little bit of study. And, and I was thinking, you know, these guys, uh, obviously, they're, they, they know what situation they're in. And, and, and uh, I don't want to be, ever be condescending or feel like that. Someone's preaching at them instead of with them. And so I went on the chalkboard and I, I drew a boat. And I said, you know, all of us are like a ship in a sea. 
And here I just drew like a, I'm, I'm a horrible artist, but if you can see this, this cliff, okay, this cliff that's going to go over the edge. And I said, all of us are in a ship and we're going the wrong way without Jesus. All of us need to repent and need to turn and go the right way. Y'all say amen? amen. The, the issue is some people are out here in the middle of the sea where they don't see or they're not close to the cliff yet. And praise the Lord, if you got saved before you were in a pit and before you were in a big problem, hey, thank the Lord for your childlike faith that you found Jesus before you found yourself with nowhere else to look but up into Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I said, but West Central guys, let me show you where you're at. Your ship's right here. Your ship is right next to the edge. Now, everyone needs to turn, but your ship is a lot closer to the edge if you don't turn now you might not have another chance. I'll say amen to that. <clears throat> this ship was going to the other side, but it was the fourth watch, and I'm sure they were glad to get Jesus in the boat. I don't know what watch you're in of your trial, your tribulation, or just your decisions and your choices in life, but if it's at the fourth watch, don't miss the chance to get Jesus in your ship. It doesn't tell us that he walked by in the first, uh, first watch or the second watch. But when they did see him, they cried out. And the Bible says that he immediately talked with them and saith to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Once they cried out and once he came in, the Bible says the wind ceased. He went up into the ship and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. Why were they wondering about how their, th how their, their uh, situation got fixed? It's no wonder at all. You get more Jesus, and, and there's always going to be a, a fix for the, the problem that we're in. I've found He's the answer to everything. Amen. And, and whatever ship that we're in, we can cry, complain, but if we cry out to Him, He'll come in the ship. The wind ceased. They were sore amazed. And then verse 52, it says, For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. <clears throat> How could you forget the miracle of the loaves and fish if you were there? I mean, how could you forget God coming through miraculously? Can we just pause a second? Has God ever done something for you? Would you raise your hand? Has anybody in this room ever had a hard heart since that's happened? Yeah. It's human. It's human. It's the explanation. It's not an excuse, but it is the explanation. <clears throat> there have been times I thought, Lord, I don't know how this is going to get paid. I don't know how this is going to get done. And then after it gets done, I'm like, I know how yeah. it's going to get done. I know how it's going to get taken care of. The same way every other one of my problems has. Not by might or strength, but my spirit, saith the Lord. Boy, if you live that life, it does not ensure that your heart will not get hard. They forgot to consider their past deliverance. They forgot to remember maybe their past discipline. They just stopped remembering the past. Isn't that weird how we always remember the bad things in our past and we forget all the good things of our past? And maybe you haven't, but Brother Rick told me he was at a gas station this week and somebody came up to him and said, are you Rick Beckley? And he said, I was when I pulled in here. <laughs> Only Rick says things like that to people, okay? <clears throat> I was when I pulled in here. And he said, do you recognize me? And he said, no, I kind of know you. And he said, when we were in high school, you took me back to the library and you led me to Christ. Wow. And he said, I've been trying to live for Jesus since then, my whole wow. life. Wow. Amazing. We forget things that we shouldn't, and we remember things that we shouldn't. Yeah. And we forget things that we should, and we remember things we shouldn't. I messed that one up. They considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And then look at the conclusion. Why did God have to get these disciples into a ship? 
<coughs> well, I believe to soften their heart. But verse 53 says this, When they had passed over, they came into the land of the Genesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they what? They knew him and ran through that whole region about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. I've, I've wrestled with this and I thought, how did all those people on the other side know? Maybe they heard the stories of the, the loaves. Maybe they heard from someone else. But my opinion is that when those boys got off the ship, they couldn't wait to tell somebody else what happened on the ship. Reminds me of that Baptist preacher that was out the, on, the, on a boat fishing with the Methodist preacher and the Presbyterian preacher. Remember the story? And the Methodist preacher was confessing and said, man, well, I've just been having some problem with uh, substance and with alcohol. And he said, I just want you guys to pray with me. And the Presbyterian said, well, I've been having some problems with anger and just uh, cursing and cussing. Would you pray for me? And the Baptist preacher said, man, I've been having trouble with gossip. I can't wait to get off this boat. Hey, they couldn't wait to get off the boat to tell somebody what God had done. When you go through something, you ought to be willing and looking and, and just watching for someone you can tell about Jesus Christ. Whew. Amazes me how quick someone new to the faith or new to the church is to invite someone else and to tell someone else about it. I've been pastoring this church for 15 years, and I'm like, well, maybe I should tell him. I guess it's because I know the preacher. You know what I'm saying? I, I might tell him to go somewhere else, and I, I say, hey, you got to come to church. Gotta come. We ought to be as excited of anybody to tell someone to come yeah. to get in church, yeah. to come tell someone about Jesus, to come invite them to, to give up the, the worldly ways and the, the, the pleasures of sin and of the world. Hey, you need to get with the Lord Jesus. You know why they didn't? Because their heart was hard. You know why they did? Because they went through a storm and Jesus showed up and they realized what got them across to the other side. I'm glad it wasn't just the promise, but it was the presence of the Lord that got them to the other side. I've got the promises of God I can know them up here, I can memorize them, and they're true. But I think God wants me to know the person of God and walk with Him daily. His promises are true, but I still think He wants to have personal fellowship with me. And I can't separate Him from the Word of God. I'll talk about that tonight. But uh, there is, just, there is a, a fellowship with Him, and then there's a following of what He says in the Word. And we can be so stale with doctrine and Scripture that we have no freshness of the appearance of the Lord in our life. And then we can be so derailed by just having some uh, fellowship or presence and without being uh, 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 pinned in or, or guided by the constraints of doctrine. And both of them need to happen. We need to know the book and we need to know Jesus. We need to have the presence of God and then have the promises uh, uh, secure in our mind and our heart. The conclusion was, everybody else knew him. They knew him on the ship, but everybody else knew him on the land. When they got off, it says that they all knew him. They all knew him. What a blessing. That when people get revived and don't miss out on Jesus coming by, that some other people are going to get saved and get the same gift that they that told him also had. They says wherever he entered, they brought the sick, laid him in the street. They besought that they might just touch but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. They ran to meet him. Oh, I hope we don't miss the presence of the Lord this week. I hope you won't miss him next week either. But let's not miss him this week. There's something to be done this week. Today. Oh, I was so glad, so glad to meet that young man because I know how many prayers his mama's prayed. I'm, I tried the text this morning, but it was a landline, so I'm gonna, as soon as church gets over, I'm going to make a phone call, and I'm going to encourage that mother, your prayers have not gone unheard. And he said, I don't even know if mom knows where I'm at, but you tell her I got saved. 
Boy, the conclusion is if you know him, others will know him too. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you for your word this morning. I pray that I wouldn't miss a passing by of the Lord Jesus in my life. And Lord, if it takes a storm for me to look, then I, I, I will welcome the storm. But I pray that my heart would be softened so I'd be looking for him without having to go through a second and a third watch of the night. Lord, would you speak to us and... and